But check it, guys, because I don't want to hold you. You know, on Monday nights, I like to do this quick. I like to be in and out. And, you know, it's coming to the end of the year, and as everybody is winding down, I can't help just like y'all, but just think, like, this has been one of the most tumultuous years in the history of the world. We are coming out of 2020, but 2020 has been something different. It's been something that since since the age, since the dawn of man, we ain't seen nothing like this. And it made me think, you know, we coming out of this thing and my perspective on it is a lot different than y'all might think. And maybe it's just, you know, OG Sean, I'm getting older. But as you get older, Life looks a little different to you. You don't see life the way you saw it years ago. Your perspective changes. You know, the way you see life, it changes. And I was thinking, you know, this, yes, it's been a very, very difficult year. And it took me back to my childhood, right? Because we all had difficult times coming up and, and, and all of us, you know, most of us didn't have it easy coming up and I definitely didn't. And I remember my mother and my mother, and I got a shout out. I prayed like last week she slipped in on the live and I pray that she's in this live this week. But you know, my mother used to take me and my brothers every single week to church. Every week she bring us back and forth to church. And God knows I didn't want nothing to do with going to church week over week. And she would dress us up in button downs and, you know, the, the, the slacks and them hard bottom shoes. And we would be just embarrassed. Like it was bad enough we was going to church, but she had us in, you know, the real cheap suit thing. Like, like we just was looking crazy. And then she always wanted us to sit up front with her in the front of the church and for any of y'all who you know we we are pentecostal apostolic and if any of y'all are from that religion you understand that is a very no-nonsense religion like you they follow the bible as the bible is written it's very very strict and i remember sitting up in the front of the church with my mother and i'm falling asleep and i'm trying to do whatever i can do to be like you know, i just want to go home you had us here with you know for sunday school then then midday church and, and we going to ch um, church at four o'clock in the afternoon got to be there at six o'clock before we can go home and my mother as much as we hated to be there, she would drag us to church week over week over week. And for us, all we wanted to do was get out of there. But as we got older, we did just that. Me and my brothers, we left. All of what my mother tried to instill in us, we left it. We hit the streets. Some of my brothers went to the streets. Others spent years in and out of the penitentiary. Some of us spent years in and out of the clubs. And while we were doing that, forgetting our upbringing, forgetting all that she put in us, she was home. And I got to thank God because this woman who was home and she knew what she put in us. And even though we wanted nothing to do with it, she was on her knees night after night after night praying for her boys. God, you know I raised them right. Keep them covered under your blood. Please bring them home safely. This is the kind of woman that my mother is. And although in our church, we don't celebrate Christmas. And I know a lot of y'all right now are wrapping gifts and y'all got the Christmas carols on and y'all are really thinking about, I can't wait to Friday so we can exchange gifts. I look at this foundation that my mother built us on. And the only thing I can think is, oh, what a gift this woman gave us. Like, even though some of us left, some of us never came back, some of us eventually made it back, but oh, what a gift she gave us. And when I was 15, my grandfather, took me in because my mother moved back down south. She was fleeing her abusive husband. Now my grandfather, he was the pastor of our church, the bishop of the church. And this man was a man's man. 
And I got to watch this man. My biological father is an alcoholic. My stepfather hooked on heroin. So when I got 15 years old, I'm moving with my grandfather. I got to see a different role model. I got to see a different side of what a man is supposed to be. And what I loved about this man is because he was the first one in that church and he was the last one to leave. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. He took care of his family and he was a role model to everyone, showing everyone that you don't have to be uh, 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 the people who go to church and they pretend on Sunday and they a whole different thing on Monday. You can do this and you can do it right. And I saw it firsthand. And I've never been one to hold my tongue. I've always been somebody who spoke my mind from day one. And I remember my grandfather would tell me, boy, shut up. Learn how to take good advice. It's free. There's a reason why God gave you two ears and one mouth. Learn to listen and then talk. But this man led by example because that is how he carried his life. And as we are in this season of giving, I can't help but think, oh, what a gift that man gave me. That was a gift just watching him. I never, ever, ever saw my grandfather pray for wealth. I only saw him pray for wisdom. I never, ever, ever once heard him pray for a mega church. But I always heard him pray for the souls of the saints that were sitting in his storefront church. What a wonderful gift that that man gave me. I remember 21 years old. I'm managing these local groups in the Bronx. And I had no way to get to any A&Rs. I had no way to get any meetings. And I would literally call record labels, A&Rs, anybody who would take my call four and five times a day. I would change my voice, speak with an accent, get on the phone and lie, do whatever I can do to get a meeting. And I remember after about five months of trying, I got a call back from the assistant of this guy named Kevin Sugar Daddy Woodley. And she says, Sean, Kevin will give you a meeting. Now, clearly she called me by my name. So she knew that that person who was harassing her day in and day out, it was the same person. And I was so excited because this was my big shot. I had never gone in and played my music for any record exec out there, let alone an a and r And on the day of, I got my hair cut. I made sure I was looking right. I was presentable. I practiced my speech and I went down there. And I remember my man Kev called me in the office and he said, what you got for me? And I handed him a cassette because at that time, that's what the demos was on. They were on cassettes and we had three record demos and I handed it to him and he sat and he listened to every single one of those records. He didn't fast forward. He sat there, closed his eyes and he bopped his head. And when the meeting was over, I was waiting because I was like, this could change my life. Like, this is what I've been waiting for. And I'm praying, please, God, let this man love what I just gave him. And he looked at me. And he let me down with dignity. He said, look, I don't see it. You know, maybe it's just me. I don't see it. But my door is always open to you. And as he shook my hand and he walked me out, I was heartbroken. I was crushed. And I remember turning back to him. And I said, hey, Mr. Woodley, thank you so much for taking the meeting. I know you didn't like my demo, my group. But I am the hardest worker you will ever come in contact with. Trust me, I am unmatched when it comes to my work ethic. And if you would give me an internship, I will go harder than anybody who's working in this building. 
And I remember Kevin standing there smiling and looking me in the eye and saying, you can start on Monday. And he knew because at that time, interns wasn't paid. And Kevin would take money out of his pocket and he would give it to me for lunch. He would sometimes take me downstairs and have lunch together and he'd just talk to me. He'd allow me to go to the studio with him. He would allow me to sit in meetings as other people came and played their demos for him and to actually ask Sean, what's your opinion on this? What you think about this? Treated me with integrity, treated me with respect. On nights when I couldn't even get home, Kev would put me in his car and he would drive me back up to the Bronx. He taught me in a business where there's nothing but sharks. There's nothing but people trying to take advantage, make money off each other. You can have integrity. You can do this right and be a man's man. And I can't help but think, oh, what a gift that man gave me. I remember when I finally got my internship at Bad Boy and I came in there and I was interning during the day and I was street teaming at night. And the only white boy in Bad Boy named Josh Takeman saw something in me. He saw me working. He saw me grinding. He saw that I was laser focused. And he brought me in his office. And he taught me the business of music. The business of marketing. He taught me how to write proposals. Put pitch decks together. He allowed me to go to meetings with him. Where he would go out and solicit brands. So that bad boy can market their brands. He sat me down and he taught me a skill set and gave me the foundation, which would serve me incredibly well in the music industry. But later throughout my years, I would go on and use that same foundation that he taught me and build this company, Power Moves Inc. Marketing and Promotion. That same company has gone on to make millions. It is going on to hire so many people who wouldn't normally be able to get a job at marketing agencies. It has allowed me to give back and teach people the same skill set that that man taught me so many years ago. And I can't help but think at this time of year, what a gift that man gave me. I remember 08, 09, as we're dealing with the greatest recession since the Great Depression. And business was terrible. No companies were spending money. I had people who depended on me to pay their bills, to feed their family. And I'm sitting in that office and I'm trying to put these decks out. And I'm trying to call anybody that I can get to cut a check with us. And nobody was spending money at that time. It was a terrible time. And I remember talking to my mother and she must have got word to my grandfather. And unbeknownst to me, my grandfather had his entire congregation for one straight week, pray and fast on my behalf. And I can't tell y'all, no sooner than that week was up, when I thought I was going to have to close my doors, when I thought that I was going to have to lay people off, when I thought the Power Moves Inc. marketing and promotion was done, the floodgates of heaven opened up. And all kind of work started coming into the business. People who I had been trying to call for months and months was now calling me. And we never, ever had to lay nobody off. We didn't have to close our doors. We didn't have to get rid of anybody, but it was because of that man and the connection he had with his God and all of those praying people who can get a prayer through, who were praying on my behalf, Power Moves Inc. is still around to this day. What a gift they gave me. And Last Tuesday, Tuesday morning, I get a call from my mother. 
And every morning I talk to this mother, I mean, to this woman. But this day was a little bit different. She called me up with a smile in her voice. Now, my mother has been sick for the last year and a half. My mother raised seven kids, six boys and one girl. She is a tough old bat. This is a tough woman. She's resilient. She's hardworking. She has had lumps. She took them and she's always gets back in there. But for the last year and a half, my mother's been bedridden. She's been sick, straight, kidney failure. Right when it was time for her to get a transplant, they do a workup on her, getting her ready for a transplant two weeks before the surgery. Come to find out she got cancer. They found a lump in her breast. We thought we almost lost this woman four months ago. I have watched one of the hardest working women on planet Earth health decline. And as the months have been going on, she has good days and she has better days, as she tells us. And she fights it. And I remember this past Tuesday, she called me and she said, Sean, your sister bought the phone in here and she let me see you live. And first, I want to tell you, I'm so proud of you. I'm just so proud of you, of you as your mother. But second, I want to tell you, I'm fighting. I'm going to get better. Because when I get better, I'm starting my business. And I was on the other end of the phone laughing because this woman is 71 years old. And she's saying because of what I said the night before on Motivational Monday, it inspired her to get better. I don't care what them doctors is saying. I'm going to work my tail off because I got a business to start. You ain't never too young or too old to make power moves. And because of that, she has been fighting and we're watching her health slowly but surely come back. She had a setback this week, but even talking to her this morning, she sounded great. Mm -hmm. But just knowing that my mother is fighting. She's not going to let this thing take her out. What a gift that woman has gave me. And I got to tell y'all, because the next time we do this Motivational Monday, Christmas would have passed. I don't celebrate it, but I know a lot of y'all do. The fact that y'all allow me to come into your space week over week and do something that is purpose driven mm -hmm. and allow me to give back and share and teach and help and pull the next generation of movers up. What a gift y'all are giving me. I pray that I'm giving y'all the same gift in return. Peace and love y'all. That's my motivation for this Monday. And I hope y'all felt my heart because I truly feel blessed. I know some of y'all look for material things as gifts. Some of y'all look for, you know, you can't wait to, to, to open up and unwrap them boxes from under the tree, but really take a second to think about some of the things I was saying tonight. I have been blessed and I've been given some of the most priceless gifts and it didn't cost anybody anything but their time and just caring about me. Y'all can give that same gift. You don't need this platform. You can give that same gift to somebody in return. You can give that same gift by listening, by giving advice, by telling somebody exactly what my grandfather told me. Learn to take good advice. It's free. This is what we can do for each other, y'all. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I'm so inspired and I love what I do week over week. And I got y'all to thank for it. Thank you so much for the gift that y'all gave me. 2020 might be difficult, but it ain't take us out. We here, y'all. We here. And we giving back to one another. I love y'all. Let's keep lifting each other up. Please check in on Wednesday because I want everybody to come with y'all questions. 
and y'all know on Wednesday you can get answers. If it's not from me, it's from other movers who are in the building. I look and I see mm -hmm. so many of the people who 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 I know are power move makers out there, and they right here in the comments. Y'all are surrounded by greatness. Y'all are surrounded by movers. Y'all are movers. And let's keep moving together. Peace and love, y'all. And I'm going to end here. See y'all on Wednesday, 7 p.m. One love. I love y'all.